I've been receiving a lot of questions about how did I make to modify the existing access fuselage to either shorten the length or to make the mass move forward. So first, if we want to start from a, the, like this one is an advanced city short fuselage, how do we proceed if we want to modify it? So if we want to mill a pocket to move the foil forward, we're going to need a machine like this, a milling machine. So this is a Proxon MF70. This is the smallest machine you can get. This is about $400 US. So this milling machine uh, is going to take some three millimeter mill here. And uh, if you have something bigger, it's simply going to make it easier. With this one, this is more than enough to do what we have to do here. So the first step is going to be to find a flat surface on which you're going to be able to fix the fuselage so that you can remove the material here to move the mass forward. But the issue here is that this surface here is perpendicular to the mass. So this surface is flat, but the bottom one is not. So as you can see here, it's moving. So the first thing we need to do is to mount this part upside down and fix it with some of the a square nut that are provided with the mill. Here I use some existing M6 screws that I have. You slide them in the track and you're going to put them inside the mass and use these existing holes in order to bolt it down in place. And what you're going to do is that you're going to use a 3 millimeter mill like this one. So you can see how it works. You can always run this one for aluminum with 20,000 RPM and you're going to slowly mill a flat surface uh, on the fuselage. When you're going to have that flat surface, it's going to look a bit like this. Okay, the part here where the paint is removed. So this part is now parallel to the top part. So now what we can do when we have this is that we can mount in this direction the fuselage onto the plate using the same thing, except now with shorter bolt that directly bolts into the existing hole. So you have to make sure that your fuselage is well aligned with the working plate. And when it's fixed, you can start mill. Okay, when you mill, always add safety glasses because this thing sends a lot of aluminum flying and as well as ear plug because this thing can get loud. Uh, always have a proximity uh, vacuum uh, cleaner because this thing, as I said, sends a lot of aluminum in the air. This is going to really facilitate collecting some of these little aluminum particles. Uh, the best way I found to get the best result was to start by fixing the fuselage like this on the workbench and then to make the groove on each side separately so that I can only adjust for one axis at a time. So I don't need to always try to look for my referential. So you do this all the way until you get to the bottom of the hole. That hole is 28 millimeter deep. So when doing this, I use the three millimeter mill that is provided by Proxon. You can buy some aftermarket one. And typically the rule of thumb is that you, if you go for a full width of milling, you never go more than one third of uh, the depth uh, from the diameter of the mill you're using. So if I use a three millimeter mill, I'm not going to mill for more than one millimeter deep at the time. So I tried it. It works well. This is the maximum depth that is uh, allowing me to work at a reasonable speed when milling. So when milling, one thing that I noticed that makes a big difference on the quality is to always sure I really locked in here the screw that make sure that this mill, the head is tight. And when I'm milling, I try to keep an end on the vertical screw that control the height because it has a tendency to slide down even if that screw is tied in. If you have a bigger machine and more strutty, it's gonna be easier, you won't have to worry about this. With this one, it's a little bit sensitive to the, the screw that is tied here and to the, the, the rotation of this screw that adjusts the eye. So what is done, it's really to remove the sides one by one and remove the middle. Uh, typically, they always say to mill in a direction that is going to be uh, such that the rotation of the mill, which is always clockwise, 
the screw of the mill are going to grip to the material and are not going to slide to it. So in this case, it's going to be we need to mill in direction that is counterclockwise in this case. Am I doing it right? No, clockwise, counterclockwise in this case, like this, so that you make sure that when you empty that pocket, these uh, teeth are always gripping on the material, not skipping on them. So once you have finished removing all that material, you verify that it, it fits with the mask, uh, you can drill those countersunk holes. Before going there, one thing I, I forgot to mention, for the corner, the original corner are all rounded. It doesn't really matter for the structural strength of the fuselage, so it's much easier for me. I just made a square hole with just a rounded corner that are made by my three millimeter mill that you can see here. So once your pocket is ready, what you can do is to move the, the foil forward. So in order to make all the measurements, you can either use a caliper if you have access to one. If not, just a high quality ruler is typically going to be enough. So in that case, it's just a, a stainless steel ruler and this is enough to make the measurement. If you have access to a caliper, even better. So in this case, you need to move your holes by the same amount that you move forward your uh, pocket in your uh, top hole. And when you drill, these holes are eight millimeter one and you need to have this countersunk hole. So in this case, uh, this is uh, five eight. Uh, in the, this is an imperial one, I couldn't find metric one. This is five eight of an inch for the large eight millimeter ones. In case you need some six millimeter, millimeter ones, such as in this one or this one, you need a smaller one. In this case, the small one is uh, uh, one uh, half an inch to make the M61. This is five eight for the uh, M8 that are used to fix the mass. So when you to do this, you need, you can do it with a hand drill. It's much easier to do this on the press drill. You're gonna do a much better job. In order to position the hole, you can first make marks with a pen, but what works well is once you have this thing positioned, you can drill a pre-hole directly with this because with this you can have a high level of precision in order to position your part and makes those pre-hole exactly where you want. So in case you want to make like this one some sl or slots in this case, or in the case like this one where you want to machine or cut or position different things, you might need, in addition to what I presented here, some of these one, two, three blocks. So you can have either the metric one or the imperial one. These ones are imperial, it works well, the metrics are gonna work even better. So in that case, we can use these to, for instance, use the existing holes, which are here parallel already to that surface. You don't need to do anything and fix the blocks in this case. You can fix the block here and you can mill this horizontal surface. You can do the same thing, you can fix them there and work on that surface. In case where you want, like in the case of this uh, radically short V3, uh, if I need to drill a vertical hole using a large, I don't have it here, a large, uh, this, in this case it's a 15 millimeter hole in order to put in this uh, carbon tube. So I need to fix it vertically using a block placed in this direction. So this is it for uh, placing it. Then if you want to make some, uh, some inserts, for, in uh, for instance, if I want to install this tail into the hole here, I need to make some insert. The same thing to fix the rear wing onto the fuselage, I need to make some brass inserts. So in that case, I need a brass, uh, a brass rod like this one. This one is half of an inch because the inside of this tube is 11 millimeters. So for that 11 millimeters, I cannot directly find that dimension stock. So I need to make it myself, that brass insert. How do I do? I use this, this uh, one and a half inch. I install that kind of little clamp that I can find. I can install it on the milling surface. I put my rod into that vise and I simply mill by going back and forth using this. I simply mill by rotating at each time by the, a slight, a small angle. I can remove the material. I think I have something that is almost round and it has the right diameter, in this case, 11 millimeters. So it looks like this. So I made three of them. 
two for the back uh, stabilizer and one from the front part. Once you have it, you drill a hole into it. So if you want to add an MS6 screws, the standard for most hydrofoils, uh, you need to drill a five millimeter holes. Then you use a, a tap like this one in order to make some treads into this one. So once you have the tread, you just simply insert it into your, uh, your fuse. So you insert it carefully. Then you've already made the holes into your fuselage. You just insert it. And then you can use an M6 screw to just put it in. So I don't have here directly the screw, but you see basically how it works. So once this screw goes in, it's really stiff, it doesn't move, and it provides the same support that you would have with a full, uh, a full aluminum fuselage with just a fraction of the weight. Uh, if you want to make that connection between a round tube and that flat fuselage, here you need to make uh, some adapter like this one. So if you don't want to go into the pain of drawing them and doing them, uh, you will need to make some jobs here to maybe use something like epoxy putty that you can mold to make those two surface mesh. It's a bit harder to work with this. It's easier if you can go with uh, 3D drawing so that you make sure the, the, the fit is perfect. In my case, uh, I, I made this for all the possible angles and so I can find what is the perfect one that works best. So these are the main tools you're going to need. In the case where you would want to uh, go like with this design and really go from something raw and cut the fuse out and make it round, you're going to need a, a belt sander in order to remove the material and smooth it down here. So I hope it answered most of, of your question. I received some, as I said, message from people out there that are already trying it. I've seen, seen some pictures of people that have already done it and reproduced fuselage such as this one. So I'm really happy to see that other people are interested into it. This is gonna make the development of foil moving forward. And hopefully in years from now, we're gonna have material that is just mind blowing. So if you have some question, just write to me, I'm going to be pleased to give you more information.